All right, welcome back to the Double Swing. It's going to be an episode previewing the Blast Premier Fall Finals, unfortunately recorded prior to the end of Pro League, so I can't give you a full recap of all the results of all the picks made by myself, Why Not, and Quack, who are filling in for the absent Yumi. Uh, but I can give you a brief update on how things are going at this point in time, just for my entertainment. Um, the viewers, you were represented by Quacka, who has currently failed two of his three picks as Spirit and MAT have crashed out immediately. Uh, Liquid is your last remaining uh, soldier, I guess. Uh, Yumi, represented by Why Not, picked VP and FaZe, who have also both crashed out immediately. Uh, he still has Na'Vi, though, with a good chance to win the event, so we'll see how that goes. And then myself, sure, Vitality are out. But they lost it at Total Fire, my own pick, so I love it. I've already got a point, raring to go. And G2 just had to beat Liquid for this to be a perfect event for me, I think. But let's introduce the guest for today. He's one of the most iconic voices of the Tier 2 scene, forming part of a duo that I think pretty much everyone who's ever woken up at 9am just to watch a crappy game of Tier 3 Counter-Strike <laughs> <laughs> has ever witnessed. I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. Tunnel J... I cannot remember, like honestly, in the last four or five years, I can't remember pretty much a day of watching Counter-Strike where I haven't at least once heard your voice, seen you on a stream. You're just an iconic fixture, a part of the furniture in Tier 2 at this point. Yeah, probably iconic for all the wrong reasons. Probably pissed off the majority of the scene by the fact that I've just done, done so much uh, at this point. But, uh, you know, I mean, just keep going, yeah, do, do the work and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, you have managed to scrape the bottom of the barrel today because uh, you've got the you've got the one member of the duo who's, like, not the analyst. So, like, uh, you, you're going to get some real dog opinions, I think, in, in today's show, mate. Yeah, as I said, it's all about the entertainment value, though. We, we just want to have a good time, enjoy our picks, and just... Bring up some ideas. Maybe there's some storylines that your mind thinks of, some things you can reference that not everyone thinks about. And that's going to be interesting in itself. Uh, before the show, I did ask you if you wanted the first pick, and you gracefully allowed me to go first, which I think is going to be a bit of a, a landmark. It's been a while since I've had first pick on the show. When guests come along, usually I let them take the lead. But hey, here I am taking first pick, and I, th I feel like this is the obvious choice, but I'm going to take Navi. Okay. Now, I've it does help that I literally just watched them uh, beat Spirit, finally <laughs> breaking their curse. The one team they could never win a series against uh, was Spirit, and they did it today. <laughs> what an amazing turn of events. And for the last month or so, this really has been, or actually maybe a bit longer than that, two months, they have not only been the team we knew they were before, uh, with the tactics, the layered approach to their takes, the way they uh, make their decisions in the mid-round, all being absolutely elite, you know, Possibly the best coach in IGL combo ever in terms of just raw brain power. But they've also had fraggers. The fraggers were the big question mark. The fraggers is what made that major an absolute fluke. We never get this from JL. And then prior to the event, after the event, we never get this from any of the other players. And no one's going to go win an event at a 48% round win rate. Well, that, guess what? They've changed. They've evolved. JL still solid, but Ima banging off heads. Bit literally one of the best fraggers we have in the scene on the rifle that's not limited by his crappy roster and wonderful more good than bad it used to be very very aggressively fluctuating between awful and amazing now we've got a fairly solid level i think navi are i think mean, they're probably going to win pro league at this point so i'm kind of regretting not having picked them <laughs> but i also know there'll be favorites coming into this event and i like them to go all the way yeah, very solid, like, uh, favorite pick, I feel, there. I mean, it, it, you are right about, like, the nature in which the, the individuals have really, like, done done extremely good things because, like, I've just been so, so enamored by the level that JL has, has been playing at, especially, like, in that last series against uh, against Spirit, like you mentioned in Pro League, yeah. like, he was just an absolute monster. And, I mean, you could just see it in the way that they were playing against that Spirit side. Like, they had them very much down, down, pat like they just they just knew exactly what they were going to do and how they were going to approach that matchup and that level of preparation i think is uh, certainly a lot of credit towards alexi b um I, I think that he's been sort of the glue that's brought it together the fact that these guys of course as individuals have been able to uh, uh to level up their individual game is obviously one of those key factors but it's not just that one sort of you know that that one sort of piece right there's not just those three guys four guys as as, as fraggers that are contributing towards this i feel like that right now i think alexi b has got a lot to prove outside of the copenhagen major you said it was a fluke and i certainly would agree at that time that was certainly a a, a good way to assess it and, and now like the recent tournaments have really just been right how do we prove that we're not going to be a fluky team how do we prove that it's not going to end up being the one-off affair and i think a series like that and the way that these guys have performed in the last few months has just been 
perfect point to or perfect evidence to the point that actually they might still be able to contest a number of these tournaments like cologne was just the first one i honestly feel like that they could actually have a, a a very good chance at winning both pro league and blast so like you've got a very solid pick to start things off yeah big fan of it and yeah hopefully that form continues you know at any given moment i think a lot of us still have that fear maybe oh emma returns to that you know pre spring season is it the full season spring season i never get how our calendar's supposed to be split. i don't even know <laughs> second half of 2024 like the first half his form was a lot weaker than this i mm. really hope he doesn't regress to it just when i pick them you know that's kind of where i'm at in my head but that's my first pick i think i'm let off with a strong one and that's my favorite sorted for group a gonna be interesting to see where you go with this one who have you taken <sighs> yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one because Group A has a number of uh, teams that uh, I, I think are going to be um, they're, they're going to struggle. I feel like uh, in 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 this competition, I think that the team that has probably the next best favorite chance outside of Navi, probably G two. I have to say, like uh, uh, as the favorite, I, I I do have some reservations about picking into them though. I think that the key concern about G two is the fact that I just don't have a lot of faith in Snacks as an IGL. I think internally there's going to be some turmoil because of the, the recent rumors about Nico going to, to Falcons and everything. But I just think about the level that sort of phase have been in recently and the fact that they aren't really able to make it much further than playoffs in Blasts or they've been unable to really do much damage. Probably gives G2 a slight advantage because of the fact that they have so many good players on that roster. Um, I just, it, again, it's one of those things where it's like, it is difficult to call because Na'Vi very clearly are the favorites in Group A. So you've got that easy pick in their own right. And yeah. uh, it kind of, it, there is a bit of a tussle for, the, uh, for avoiding going out in last place, I think. Sure. So G2's your pick, locked in. That's uh, mm -hmm. okay. G2's a team I have had a lot of criticism for when they announced the snack signing. For me, it was just patently absurd that they believed this was the solution to yeah, yeah. all their problems. And in there are there have been some suggestions. I think some of the things I've seen, even a few other people intimating to me, that this is more of a just wallpapering over some cracks type of move. It's like realistically G nico's voice his influence his impact in the mid round is so strong that yeah that igl like ego voice just brain out of the way let him just call early things straight out of spawn and then the rest of the game plan is the stars figuring it out because they have that caliber of player yeah. beyond that point so that's kind of how it's sort of played out it has led to them being one of the tactically weaker teams at the top end of the scene but my word the fragging is electric and yeah. that can never be denied i never denied it myself you know at the time when i made that video i took a lot of flack from g2 fans you know for being so honestly violently against the move but i even said it then this team has the fragging ability to just fluke anything at any given moment like it's all well and good saying oh we completely outmaneuvered them we got all the players in what happened yeah we've seen it before hunter sat on the b site of dust two in a completely exposed position easy to trade just multi-killed he got four kills it's absurd you know nico yeah. four bullets two kills with an m4 this sort of ridiculous play that you can't really rely on they can pull out with more consistency than anyone else just because of who they have so g2 are a threat i prefer them as an underdog pick but here they are seeded just above phase in the or well, they're ranked higher than phase in hill tv so they have to yeah. be kind of a favorite team it's going to be di difficult i think to count them out but hard to really lean on yeah look again it's between those two teams in my eyes like again navi is the obvious is the obvious favorite so the fact i can't pick them means that you know i have to go sure. elsewhere in that sense so again it is a case that i just think that the both phase and g2 are going through turmoil at the moment and it's just a case of who do i think has had the more recent yeah. issues um and, and i and i and i think that for phase especially right like their whole climb down from like the beginning quarter of the year and, and obviously the end of last year has just hit me a lot harder i feel like like i had a lot of like a lot of good things to say about phase and a lot of faith uh, a lot of faith in phase uh when mm. they sort of started off cs2 as being the team and i thought they were going to carry that forward even after copenhagen when when they lost out and it's like just since that point we've I know that a lot of their that tournament runs have still been in playoffs and they've still been able to, you know, work good like uh, results. But I just I just look at the way that things have have got come down basically and, and I feel like that there might be a bit more in this downward trajectory because I, I, I just think they need some sort of change. I don't know where that change comes in, unfortunately, because it is a delicate thing to to look at, right? Because again, they also have a stacked roster. Um it's just that like I I, I just think that G two 
again, maybe have been a little bit less disappointing in my eyes. Again, you're right about the snacks thing. Um, I'm very curious to see how the dynamics are going to work with the fact that Nico probably is out of the door by the time that the mm. Shanghai is over. Um, and especially because in, in the long time, I have a lot of doubt that G2 are going to maintain themselves because I think that internally Nico has been a bit of a glue for at least a couple of players involved uh, in that roster. Um, and it's like, you know... I, I just think that in the here and now, G2 have got a little bit more going for them and perhaps that dead team syndrome might also come out to play at Blast. Yeah, kind of rooting for that. I, Yeah, I've, I've put that, my bet on the like the dead team buff before, but in this case, I feel like it's more real. These are more legit mm. fraggers than... Well, the last time I made yeah. that pick, it was based on Ents being dead. And that was, <laughs> they weren't just dead. They were a shambling corpse, you know, rotting, <laughs> falling apart. Not even close to the same idea. So no, I, I kind of like the pick. It's, it'd probably be the... I'm not sure it'd be my second pick in this draft overall, um, but it would be definitely my pick to go to uh, like in Group A if I had to bet on one of these teams winning. I'd bet on G2 running a fluke rather than FaZe midding their way all the way yeah, through. Yeah, ex exactly. Like, I'm just I'm just thinking back to the way that Dallas played out, and it's like, you know, Stewie wasn't the reason why they won Dallas. Let's be honest here. Like, that's <laughs> that's that's the most obvious thing that anyone that has a brain could tell you. Um, uh, and, and I certainly, I'd like to think I have one. I guess you'll be the judge of that. But, you know, like, I, I, I look <laughs> at the way that they just played around that. And again, you mentioned the star power. You mentioned the fragging potential. I think that can reach a much higher ceiling when it hits on the right nerves, right? I don't know if FaZe has have that higher ceiling than G2 at the moment. And, and again, that's why I sort of go with them. It has its risks. It probably could, they could shit the bed, but I, I, I think that this is one of those cases where they will go quite deep. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Cause I think, yeah, I, I'd have my money on them as well, but I'm going to take my pick. Actually, I've got another pick. I'm going to take a route to group B and I'm going to do something a little controversial. I'm going to avoid the favorite in group B. I okay. want to pick an underdog in group B as my second pick. So I think this team is on the rise and, well, we're about to watch them play G2 right this second. Okay. And we'll find out how well-founded those feelings are for me. But I'm going to just do it now. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to take Liquid as my underdog pick in Group B because there's something about this roster that shouldn't really work. Now, I said this on uh, the last episode of the Double Swing. I kind of said this. I was like, do they have the best coach in any given matchup? Probably not. Best IGL? No, not even. Best player against a lot of these top teams, not even true. But they are so good from one to five, I don't really care. Even the weakest player, Yakindar, does so much. To, and by the way, this is liquid. I don't know if I said it, but this is obviously <laughs> <did>. liquid. <laughs> In my head, I was like, I didn't say it. But no, I did. I did. Just You're gushing right. so much about them that you just forgot. Wait, have I have I actually mentioned this? No, you definitely yeah, did. Too busy weaving my narrative that I forgot who I was even talking about. But yeah. Because Yakinda is often, you know, pointed at as the problem child of this roster. Like he's not putting up the frags you'd want. The impact isn't there. But when he gets it right, he gets it really right. And also, even when he's on his off days, you know he's got a really like big voice in the team. He brought a new level to this roster, even when he was in there alongside Elish. Sure, did it tank Elish's game? Maybe, but who cared? At that point, those were the best results they'd seen in years. Uh, so the fact that even when he's on this team, he doesn't have to be outstanding, I think is amazing. And even at his weakest, he's better than Snacks. He's better than Lexi B. He's better than so many of these really bad fragging IGLs. You know, players who put up hooksy tier stats or worse, Snacks. Ah, uh, check your numbers from the Pro League <laughs> groups. They were abhorrent. Uh, they were, they have, were, yeah. Yeah, they have so many guys who are just outstanding at putting up the numbers they need to. And Ultimate, I think, for them has been the best find they could have hoped for. Not only a competent confident Orpa who's taking the majority of their opening attempts on the CT side, but a player who's so good with the rifle, steady with a pistol. He's the perfect sort of style of player you want on your AWP right now in CS2. The games are short. You need to be good with a pistol. And we're not going to force that AWP out because it might break our economy. So we'll wait for us to lose a round first. So you need to be on an AK, you need to be on an M4, and you need to be delivering. And he can. So they have done a great job scouting, picking. Maybe it was pure luck because holy crap, that came out of nowhere for me when I saw that announcement. Yeah. But it's a great job they have. And man, they are loaded. This is a dangerous I mean team. I mean, look, I, I was listening to Talking Counter, uh, the one where they had twists on as uh, as the guest, and he was sort okay. of like talking through the whole, uh, uh, like the process of scouting and the way that they've done it. And I have to admit, like using the same methods and, and things that they would have utilized, I, I never, ever would have picked Ultimate to be in this liquid side as well. I think a lot of people 
have um uh, uh you know have eaten quite a lot of humble pie because like he wasn't playing the highest level of competition prior to this no. point right and and so you never look at that and say right this is a kid that could very easily slot into a tier one team you never say that and yet despite that he made the jump straight from the polish tier three right up to the tier one environment and he's done extremely well how in the cinnamon toast fuck is he the most highest rated player on liquid in pro league at the moment like I, I, they're not finished the tournament run, so I'll give that. Admittedly, we're recording this as you mentioned just before they go take on G two. But yeah. how the hell does that happen? Like he's been in the team for like two, three tournaments, and it's just like he feels like he's part of the tier one furniture already. Like it's it's stunning. It genuinely is stunning. Y you're right. Like no one would have expected that in their right mind, and liquid very clearly are in like a different kind of mind and and, and it is credit to their scouting staff credit to twists in, in the way that he's built the roster because i and i i honestly thought he was going to bomb i genuinely was like watching carefully to see how liquid would just shit the bed in their first outing with him he would be another uh um oh uh what was his name now um uh bulgarian player who was part of liquid before oh rain waker Rain Waker, that's it. I, I, you know, it, it, I just thought it was going to be like Rain Waker, where I, I, I thought that Rain Waker had better credentials than someone like Ultimate did. Uh, you know, in considering theory, his, yeah. his, you know, his potential in the tier two space. Like I casted so many of his games as part of uh, Fiend and, and Skade, and uh, you know, the, the things that he would uh, uh, do in those uh, Bulgarian lineups indicated to me that he was going to be a, a, a very proficient, uh, you know, man within his role, and he just didn't do it well on Liquid. I thought Ultimate was going to be much more of the same, but they have a lot again i'm eating a lot of humble pie and even 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 in the case of twi uh, twist right taking the igl reins i thought that he would not be able to sustain his numbers i thought that he wasn't you know experienced enough as an igl to be able to sustain the success for liquid but obviously that has not ended up being the case again they've done extremely well in the tournament runs that they've been given i will say that there are some things that they need to improve upon because i've noticed that when they take on tougher opposition when they go up against the phases the navis they don't always get those victories. And I think that's the one thing that's going to hold them back in a competition like Blast. 100% agreed. Uh, but I'm I'm buying that they're on the rise. And if they win oh, this yeah. G2 game, I'll look like a genius going into the event. But even if they lose it, let's say they lose a close one to G2, I do feel like the way they've been playing, the way they've been getting better, uh, the way they've just kind of been synergizing as well, I think should lead them to a, a perfect crescendo here at Blast. And that's why I've taken them as my pick. Uh, but all right. You can go anywhere, Group A, Group B. Uh, you've only taken a favorite out of Group A, so you've got a lot of choice left. What are you going to go for now? Hmm, it's a uh, it's a it's a weird one because like I, I Group B would make a lot more sense if I went to that just if I can get like a solid pick in. Um, uh, and, and I feel mm. like that is I feel like I am going to do that. You know, you you pick the favorite over in Group A. I'm going to pick the favorite over in Group B. I think Vitality are going to win the whole thing. I'm going to okay. be honest. Um, they they just look too damn good right now they are taking victories left right and center you can't really stop them yes pro league that is the one outlier but just think about quite literally everything else that they've done over the course of the year it's only pro league is the third event which they've dipped outside of the top four of the uh, of, of the tournament the others being katowice and ewc ewc i don't really count i don't really value it as a, as a very yeah. big tournament other than that it's been top four at the major second place in pro leagues the season 19 dallas as well cologne the victory like they've just been taking as many trophies as is possible people have been having a lot of conversations about players potentially getting kicked i'm not convinced they just look good i mm, prior to watching them lose to eternal fire would have been right up with you like i actually picked them as one of my teams going to pro league playoffs now the pro league playoffs draft was a bit special because we did pick blind we had no idea what the bracket was going to be we were recording that uh, the the day basically the groups finished um uh, so we had no clue that i'd end up with two of my picks playing each other but the fact they lose that game you're essentially having to bet that eternal fire are such a great powerful dark horse such a plucky little team that we've kind of underrated that this shouldn't be too abhorrent for them yeah flamesy had a slow day and when you're facing a team with this potent of a rifle core it's going to be an issue for you. Maybe that's the narrative you have to believe in to pick Vitality. But I've got to admit, you're right. The track record speaks for itself. They have been so damn good this year. Uh, no matter what we're saying, Cut Mezzi, Spinks is baiting. Uh, what is Flamesy's CT role doing? We should switch him up with Apex. No matter what the narrative has been, they've always found a way to be competitive in tournaments. They've ma made it happen when it actually mattered. And they've won a lot of big games. And yeah, beating uh, Na'Vi in a... Professor 5 final to secure yeah. Cologne. What a match. And honestly, 
what a statement for them that yeah we've got Zai Wu he's still one of the best players in the world and we're not bums like that's always the narrative so these this guy should be cut that guy should be cut they're clearly still a very elite team and just don't quite get the respect they deserve so I like the pick we are of course we're kind of gambling on the idea that we'll have our riflers come to the party and Apex won't decapitate someone in between then like because he has a tendency <laughs> to fly off the handle but oh no I I've been a big sort of Vitality fan from when they were a French team. And so I, I can only respect the pick. I hope it works out yeah. for you. I mean, look, the Eternal Fire thing, obviously, I understand why that throws a lot of doubt into the uh, into mm -hmm. the pick itself, right? Because you probably shouldn't be losing to Eternal Fire if you're team Vitality. But you've got to remember that Eternal Fire seem to do well in Pro League as their most consistent high-level event. Like, you know, they are a great dark horse in any other consideration, but mm -hmm. I wasn't very impressed with their outings at, at, at Yellow Compass. Um, uh, the Sky Esports event that they went to, True. I wasn't really too... Uh, considering how dire the Mongols were at that particular event as well, I, I was there, I was casting that event. Um, uh, I, I wasn't too uh, thrilled with the way that they went out to a team that was very clearly off-form uh, in Mumbai. Um, and I just think about the fact that when it comes to land tournaments in general, like Pro League seems to be the one sticking point where Eternal Fire team to do very well in and so I, I i look at that environment considering that environment that they've uh you know made their names in and i can respect the fact that they've gone again to do another sick run probably their best run before but they have been in quarterfinal matches in the past as well so you know remember it's not exactly like it's unfamiliar territory for a team like eternal fire and uh having the right game plan on the right day it can often work out vitality also beat a tier one team during the group stage to get to this point that being team liquid that we just gushed about a moment ago so like you know like i i i, I think the run isn't like and as well as that you got to think about the fact that how many overtimes were played in that eternal fire oh, matchup crazy, like there yeah. was it could have very easily been a vitality victory had one or two more kills one extra round been taken away that little extra marginal difference and we'd be singing a very very different tune to how vitality versus mibr <laughs> would be looking like in the semi-finals yeah. right like you know again I think the differences were marginal there in that match, and I don't put that as a major strike against Vitality. Yes, it is a strike against Vitality, but not one that I don't think is going to convince me that they are not going to win this tournament. Again, I think that they're going to lift the trophy this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about it, and I'm looking at the overtimes, and I'm thinking about, I did just say, like, Flame Z, not really the player we expect him to be. He's been, through their ups and their downs, very consistently... Uh, clutch for them in the big games on the big stages especially like someone published the graph he's one of the biggest like step uppers i guess you could call it like he really comes to the fore when the pressure's big when the moment's big the lights are bright he's there so flamesy having an off day in a fake arena yeah that's probably i mean it's barely more than a studio land it's 40 yeah, people polite clapping it's not a real actual event so i but guess let's put in that it this sense, way right like yeah. you know dweg dweg and the bin men uh, i don't know if you know the bin men they're basically I do know like them, a, yeah, a, yeah like, just for the benefit of the audience at home you know the uh, the bin men are like a small little like community gaming uh, uh not organization i guess you could say they're a bunch of mates a bunch of casters from the tier two yeah, space cool dweg retro um uh, they, they do some gaming at uk lands and they raise money for charity but they also just decide that we're gonna go out to events we all went to the paris major together and a small contingent went to malta and their focus was not to go to pro league it was just to do like scuba diving so like you know <laughs> let that really focus on how the priorities are when you go to an event like pro league like it's not exactly like the biggest deal in the world you're right like it probably should be a much bigger product than it actually is but it is what esl make it and as a result there's a reason why people value iem more than epl and I, I think that that certainly is one of the key reasons as, as to why so you know i i think that those again are going to be factors to consider when we go to the big arenas sure I think, yeah, we'll get a better version out of Flame Z. It should be a stronger team. In theory, all that checks out. Mm. I'm going to follow this up with my own Group B favorite. Obviously, the only one left to pick, because I'm not going to make some... Because technically, we set these rules like two years ago when we started this show. You're allowed, if you want to be an absolute nutcase, to pick <laughs> a team who's in the bottom half of the HLTV ranking for the event as a favorite, just because you're that insane. Um, <laughs> so I could pick Astralis with Cadian on the debut, but I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I like winning and I don't like paying a hundred pounds. I mean, it's to charity. I'll probably end up paying it anyway, but <laughs> I like my money. So I'm going to keep it in my pocket. I'm going to take spirit as my group B favorite. They, well, they literally have to be, but also something about them that really winds me up. Now I just released the video about one of the kids left on their academy. Uh, just pointing out that it's kind of unfair the ability this organization have to scout talent because Kyosuke 
in terms of the numbers, is ridiculous and at that point Donk esque. Now, there's some things about the way he plays. Obviously, he's not a clone, but it's just highlighting the fact that even with Donk, even with Zontix promoted, because Zontix was a really solid player on the lower levels, like he wasn't a, he's not a dud, but he's always, you know, brought into question at this level. There's often game series where he just disappears and you think, could we be getting more out of him? You look at their, t their, their academy side, they're playing like tier two, tier three teams, not academy league. And these kids are putting up numbers, winning games today. They just 2-0'd Favbet. They are a legit dangerous side for grown men getting paid to play. So Spirit do a great job when it comes to scouting. Great job even developing those players into tier one viable options. There's something about, the, I think, the coaching and the way they prep big events that doesn't make sense or just doesn't work. They try to bring this sort of attitude to, like, you see yeah. Zontix in the interviews, like, yeah, against the big teams, we should be better. I don't really see how you believe that because you're very much a team that's, at certain events, you will steamroll everyone. And I'm not talking Donk, I'm talking the team. Yeah. And in other events, it takes the miracle from Donk to squeeze by wildcard. Like, what are we doing here? I saw them go into that G2 game at Cologne and just completely miss the point. Like, there was a, a nuke game plan prepped for them ahead of time that Halley and his big brain with all that prep he does could have just copy-pasted. And instead, we got this really passive weak-looking team who didn't seem to understand they have the best rifle in the world, probably even with Nico on the server. Like, that is ab absurd. So I'm picking them because I know they have Shiro. I know they have Donk. And I know that when they get all that prep right, they can absolutely steamroll everyone. I'm just hoping that's the version we get because we've just had a couple events in a row of complete shit from Spirit. <laughs> yeah. To put it I bluntly. Mean... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I'll give them a pass for Cologne because I have heard. I don't want to bring them up on the on public on the public show, but I have heard there's some circumstances behind the scenes that may have affected them for that particular event. I can't verify any of that information, but I think it's viable enough to where I might give them at least a pass for that. The wild card thing, though, that's what made me lose a shitload of confidence. How have you let wild card come back from a nine three nine three advantage for Spirit? You've let them come back yeah. into a map to take the 24 rounds. Wild card. Wild card. I mean, Fousey's the truth, clearly. Fousey <laughs> is the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm semi joking. I, mean, I do like him, but still. Sus like... and Fousey are very decent tier two players, right? Yeah. And again, you know, you can ask anyone who's, who covers the tier two scene like I do. You'll know that they've been around for a fair while. They've been working their way up and they definitely deserve the call up. And, and I'm happy for them as individuals to do what they did against Team Spirit. But one yeah. more time, it's fucking wild card, right? <laughs> like, this isn't a team that broke out and stunned even FaZe into laughter by winning Katowice, right? That was Team Spirit. Spirit are the squad that should be doing far better than what they do right now. And they're just figured out by everybody at the moment. Like, uh, the, the issue is not Donk. It absolutely is not Donk. I don't think it's any of the individual players and their performances, minus a dip in a best of three here and there, right? Donk, I think, is making a case for being best player of the year. I'm fearful that right now we're going to see Donk be a part of Spirit in the same way that uh, Simple was part of Na'Vi back when he was very clearly the best player in the world. Be one fuck all. He won nothing at all. And I fear that's going to be the case for Team Spirit going forward. Not to mu as much of an extreme extent because they are still taking things. You know, they won the spring finals uh, before the player break, which obviously is hats off to them. And they did bounce back and win Bet Boom Dacha. But like, I'm thinking about like the tournaments that they really should be um, doing, you know, far better in the IEMs that they really want to win. The Colognes, as you mentioned before, Pro League, I think that could have been a much more legitimate trophy as well for them. And, you know, it blasts the uh, full finals, especially, right? If they can connect that second trophy, then it'll be some sort of level of redemption. But if we keep going up and down and up and down like this, like this is going to be, I think, like a breakout year, very much ruined for a team like Spirit. It was supposed to be historic. This was supposed to be... Yeah. Man, this was supposed to be like... I'm trying to think of a metaphor that re like was as actually like Counter-Strike related, <laughs> but I'm, I'm too much into the sports world of things, but like... Go this was it. supposed Go to be a it. huge just moment for Donk after Katowice, because before Katowice, it's not sure if they can actually go win big events. They, we know we have this phenomenal talent. He's supposed to be amazing. And yeah, instead... There's so many games where we don't even get the best out of him because the game plan isn't there. The way yeah. he's set up to fight is so 
donk figure it out kind of we've left this like big trench of space and like just go do something I'd, i just wish they had a, a more explicit game plan of how they're gonna get him into the game because he's not 27 year old nico he's not mm. a veteran of the scene we, we we see this we know he's mechanically insane and instinctively he can do things that boggle the mind like he will make reads understand like certain positions but he's not that veteran level of just in terms of the mind games of counter-strike he needs some setup and they just don't seem to get it right in a lot of maps and that once he doesn't get the openers once he doesn't make that happen the backup the fullback the mid round where is it a lot of the time it's try to group walk out b for example today on dust 2 it was walk out mm. b over and over again was their attempt it was a terrible idea it never worked and so I really question the prep that's going into these games and whether or not Chopper is the genius they need in terms of figuring out game plans on the fly. Mm. I mean, I, I, I don't doubt Chopper's in-game leadership because he's obviously shown that he's got the perseverance and the ability to bring these players up and find them at least initially in the highest end echelons of the scene. I think more mm -hmm. maybe the backroom might be the more bigger concern for them. Um, because I think it is more preparation based, you know, like you are right about the way that they, you know, they, they go through their, their same game plan time and again, and it has been read upon, right? People know what they're doing. They know exactly how to counter them. I mean, and as, as you said, right, the idea that Donk is the central factor to the whole series victory, I think is very antithetical to the spirit that I saw break out at the start of the year. Like Donk was a major piece in a major system right in a major set of uh, of players right the academy guys were all great individuals of their own right shiro was also sick you had uh, uh magics and all and and part of that uh, previous sort of like, iteration of the spirit side to give that like cornerstone and obviously donk and zontix coming up from the academy side uh, with art frost previously as well they were all just sick individuals mm. that yes donk was the standout guy but that didn't preclude the other guys from also being able to take over games do massive work as as individuals so like if they are basing themselves around Dong, I think that's a major, major misstep in the way that Spirit approach the matches. Maybe there is a certain level of calling on the fly, but I think if they're fundamentally being read upon by everybody else, then they're going to counter so effectively. And when Dong can't get involved in the matchups, like, you know, call back to that Na'Vi series on that Mirage. Remember, Shiro was the man that was stepping up big time yeah. on that Mirage. He was the guy that was going the most, and they were only able to get that 7-5 half. The second half comes in, Dong didn't get involved fast enough. And at that point, Na'Vi just took over. JL took over. Everyone took over from that side and you know that's a key example of the issue i think just to watch that best of three back and just take careful notes as to the issues that we have on the spirit squad at the moment and again i don't want to see their breakout year get ruined by the tail end just being dog shit because they deserve a lot better than them donk i think could very easily win player of the year right now with the form that he's in yeah. he just needs a few more trophies and i honestly wouldn't preclude it from him from the time we go to belgrade for the hltv awards like that's just the way that i see things yeah a couple even i was honestly a couple more grand finals would be enough they don't have to yeah, go and exactly. win all these trophies but going out in groups going out at you know, the, the quarterfinals here it's just not quite good enough it's it's decent. It's all right. It's nothing to scoff at entirely, but it's not exactly good enough for the best player in the world. Yeah. And that's our complaint. All right. You got your third pick coming up here. I mean, you've got two underdogs now to pick. <laughs> and uh, this is where things get ugly. This is where the show gets fun for me, I think. This is where I, I really start to have, have some joy because you've got to pick a group A and a group B underdog. And the, <laughs> there's not that many pretty faces left, I'm going to be honest. The uh... night is old. Yes, I. Oh God! See, the thing is, is that like, because there is an obvious choice in my eyes at the moment, be considering like you there know who's been picked yeah. so far. Um, there's a part of me that wants to throw a few spanners into the works. Though, again, you know, we start talking before the show that sometimes I just make opinions exclusively to piss people off. You know, <laughs> just like there's not there's sure. not much rhyme or reason behind them. If I can make half of an argument for it, like. I'll, I'll just say it for the, again, the, the public at home. Uh, Dwayne and I, we run this uh, content piece called the Tier Two Awards, where we give away certain awards for certain players and it's like and, and certain teams and things. You know, the regular stuff that you would expect. You know, best breakout, best veteran, blah 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 blah. When it came to Player of the Year for last year, it was obviously Donk who was going to win. But just to piss Dwayne off, I just said, you know. Pat. <laughs> just because just, just I was like, oh, he's got more trophies than him. So that's the kind of person I am. And I think that because you didn't pick Astralis, I'm going to pick Astralis. Oh, wow. Just because <laughs> just because I love the chaos, right? <laughs> Okay. No, I mean, I've got the. I, just I, I, I thought, just in chaos. case, there's the graph. There's a there's Astralis on screen. 
yep. being moved and, into someone's underdog pick before anyone else. Yep. And okay. and like I said, and like I said, okay, I I if I can make a half an argument for it, I will make the argument just 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 for the sake of it. And for Astralis especially, right? I think about the IGL change that they had earlier on this year. And it was in Chengdu, where I think they actually did pretty well, you know? Like, they had a very good group they run. They playoffs, beat yeah. FaZe twice. They made it to the top four. Uh, sorry, they didn't beat FaZe twice. They uh, beat them once, and then they almost were able to beat them a second time over with a very, very good ancient map as well. And uh, beating out VP, not losing a map out in there, like, they topped out their group. I thought it was a very, very good run. But it was just that one run, obviously. It fell apart from there, and Device was removed from IGL to now bring Cabby, uh, Cabby, sorry, Kadian back to rejoin Stabby, and uh, now we have the team that we have today. So, considering how similar the elements were and how much of a shock to the system that was during Chengdu, I'm gonna give him a, I'm, I'm, again, I, I think that it will just be this one event. It's one event, and everything else is going to be uh, a little bit shit until the end of the year. <laughs> but uh, I, I have a lot of faith that Kadian can do something rather special because he's already got the connections as well towards uh, Stown and, 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 and Yabby, right? Like, I still think that there is something there in that core. It's a case of applying it to everybody else. <laughs> right. Uh, Let I just me love see. the look. So, uh, I, I, this is exactly the reaction I wanted, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course it was. Uh, how, 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 how do I find a way to be positive? Let's let's try and be positive. You know, positive emotions. Live a long, healthy life. You need to keep it positive. But let's so let's let's go with your idea. The shock to the system, because yes, you're right. The last time they did the switch in IGL, you know, Astralis device IGL, the big headline. And then they go on to make, was it top four Chengdu, top four Pro League? Which, on paper, by itself, phenomenal. Like, wow. You made back to back top fours at elite events. And yeah, technically they did, but on both occasions, that was just them making it straight to playoffs and then going straight home. So it wasn't really that great. No big scalps taken, no big names beaten in the playoffs and so it really felt like a bit of a hollow victory like sure we managed to get all this fragging but we're not really quite there but in this case i think there is okay the positives device is still one of the best probably six i'd say just off the top of my head i've not got a, a list of my favorite orpers right now in front of me i'd say he's maybe like the sixth best orper in the world okay. and that's whilst being distracted with the petty silliness of, oh, I've got an in-game lead as well. I can imagine him without that on his plate. He could just focus on, you know, scoping up, shooting people. He'd be amazing. And for the current meta of AWPers, you know, the shorter games, he'd be good at pistols, he'd be good at rifles. You can't just be a good AWPer. Well, he was a born and bred, like, all-star level, like, rifler before he became the AWPer uh, of the significantly successful Astralis. So he's definitely the ideal player you'd want on there right now. And bringing in Cadian does this other thing. You're right, he's got that connection with Yabby and Stout. But more specifically, he's coming in on the rifle. He's no longer someone who's trying to be set up. He's explicitly there to set people up. And if you look back, man, that guy was chucking flashbangs on the AWP. Can you imagine what he's going to do now on the rifle? He's going to be chucking those flashbangs mm. I and mean, getting them those initial fights. You know, Yabby loves to be like boosted up towards Vertigo B uh, on the left side of those stairs. It's, he just abuses that opening attempts he does it all the time uh, going as far back to copenhagen flames but imagine now also when they want to scale up past that they've got a bitch entry who's literally willing to die for even an inch of ground just an opportunity for yavi to take a headshot so you've got the ultimate soldier who's calling but also completely self-sacrificial no reason for him to set himself up at all you've still got two riflers who have always had the potential to be legit top 10 players just haven't quite had the right environment to deliver it in uh, because they just never got it right on heroic and that might have been a part of the problem was the orp igl factor uh, so look here superstar orper two riflers who could be stars a support piece and cadian it's a more balanced system i don't think they have the time to get it right for this event i like the risk i i'll respect i'm gonna I said, I'll talk myself into liking it. That's how I'm going to put it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I my didn't even need to do that words, much convincing. Uh, did you know, see, words, I'm just yeah. a visionary, apparently. <laughs> like, I like the idea of the structure and all that. I do think they're getting absolutely bodied, just to be real. 
Um, but there's a the potential thing, right? for it in the future. I, I, I am going to watch every Astralis match at Blast exclusively because I want to see if they do get shit on how quickly they're going to blow up again. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> I am here for the wrestling melodramatic bullshit. This is like some Matt Hardy versus Edge bollocks, right? Like, this is pure, like, stuff I'd never ever seen before kind of levels of forgiveness professional forgiveness that you could never expect that even the most reasonable people and it's happening right now so i i want to see it i'm i'm here for it all and look I, i'll admit <laughs> this is throwing caution to the wind in the most pure sense as an analyst but i i i'm i'm just fucking going for it so there you go astralis my underdog pick i love it i absolutely love it and on that note i do have one underdog pick left to make and this one's literally uh well no it's actually another pick i thought i thought this would be forced but it's not forced because you did go for a group b underdog mm -hmm. so i get to pick between the two f's bays and falcons for those of you worried about what i was about to say um mm. an odd choice because i got one team who are well <laughs> definitely dead and another one who <laughs> if things keep going poorly might make they a few changes, but for now <laughs> for now we're still in one piece and are still believing in themselves i'm sure so i'm going to pick them I'm taking phase. Because, okay. yes, as I said, you know, Falcons, we, we pretty much know at this point Nico's coming in. Uh, for who is the real question? I think when it initially got announced, the first time I saw it, the conversation I had with other people was, is it going to be for Dupree or is it going to be for Madden? Uh, then I, I hear, like, I think it's Richard Lewis on his video was just like, yeah, I've heard, like, one rumor, nothing real. But the one, like, you know, piece of chatter is he's coming in for Snappy and Magus will be calling. Who cares? Everyone on the roster now is pretty much in a state of disarray because they don't know what's coming, yep. but FaZe are still, in theory, solid. Now, Pro League, uh, of course, it has to be said, they disappointed. They, for the first time ever, they lost a series to this iteration of complexity. They haven't lost complexity since Blame F was there. So the last time they lost to Cole, for reference, the guy who beat them could bench press their entire team combined. Like, that's how long it's been. Uh, <laughs> It's been that <laughs> nice. long, and Complexity are yeah, not not a great team to lose to, but at least there was some fight to the roster. I think FaZe have really struggled since coming to this new season for a couple reasons. I think, firstly, Brokey has cooled off. He was either MVP or in that conversation at every event they won up until the end of that season, like the first season of CS2 and then going into all the way to the end of Chengdu. He was a pretty good Warper. Like, I'm talking amongst the elite rather than just a solid piece. They've struggled to get production out of Frozen and Rops. Like, most importantly, because Rops has... He's been part of that sort of narrative of like, oh, the Lurkers just aren't working. It's not working. It feels like they're just baiting too much. Like, they're not getting the impact that you really want. And somehow FaZe for a long time were managing to have two players with the same problem. <laughs> it's like, how have you managed to have two uh, guys who are just not in the fights enough? Uh, but they started addressing some of those concerns, at least in my eyes. I saw more out of Frozen, more aggression. Because when he's forced to take fights, when he actually has to go challenge people and hit a headshot, he really can. It just feels like a lot of the time he's not comfortable doing it. Uh, but they saw a little more of that in the last couple of events. This series they lost. They had the best riflers on the server in terms of rating. They just didn't get the win out. And Brokey was relatively poor. So I think FaZe still have a little bit of juice left to squeeze out. The Ross is not entirely dead, but mark my words, if by the end of the year they haven't won another trophy, I do expect um, Rain to be moving on. I think that will be mm. the, the reality of it. And I'm hoping for my, my personal like propaganda, like what I've been pushing for, is they don't bring in an aggressive like sort of entry player to replace him. They actually push Frozen into those roles, bring in someone like my my go to is Demka for all of these conversations, but just any any yeah, rifle who, who can play like a little more solid, a little more passive and allow them to really make Frozen the key part of the team that should shine. Uh, but for now, they might be able to make it out in third, and then who knows? Phase, playoffs, a big stage. It is Carrigan at the end of the day, so there's yeah. always a chance. I, I do feel like Phase thrive in that big stage arena land environment. I mean, it's happened time and again. It's happened over CS2. It's happened over CSGO, both in this roster and other rosters. Like he's an IGL that thrives off that, you know, that, that crowd environment. You just see the way he plays up to them, the cockiness and sometimes the, yeah. uh, you know, the, uh, I'm not going to say BM, it's probably not the right word for it, but you know, that, that whole sort of like attitude that he has towards playing up yeah. to the crowd, I think is a, is, is, is a good thing. 
um, in terms of like you know bring up with the mentality. Again, and I've said this earlier, I'll repeat it. The fact of the matter is that Faze have been in the downward slope. Um, True. You know, and it, it feels like as I'm looking back on that Chengdu win from IEM and like how it kind of exacerbated they were at that uh, tournament victory. Like, you know, they were saying, "Yeah, we won it, great." We also just lost the major, so there's not really much to be excited about. And I feel <laughs> like that lack of excitement internally has started to like metastasize to a certain capacity. And and and, and I think that you know, like you talk about the idea that Rain moves on, they find someone else. I I'm very hesitant to call any particular roster moves because I think that Phase have all the pieces. Like they obviously did at the start of CS2, they had it at the end of the last year, right? They were going back to back finals, back to back trophies. You know, we were looking at the the Copenhagen major saying. This is FaZe's chance. This is, you know, Carrigan in front of his own home crowd being able to lift the big one for the second time in his career. You know, the one trophy that he's been able to miss out upon. And, you know, and, and I think that, you know, one of the opinions or, or one of the takes that I've heard from uh, 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 one of the pundits, I can't remember if it was Richard Lewis or Thorin. Someone said that one of the two said this, um, uh, but uh, they, they said like, um, you know, that Shanghai is probably the last chance that Carrigan's going to get to win a major. Like he, and honestly, that probably to me sounds like it is the most like likely outcome considering his age, considering the, you know, like his, uh, um, it, it, considering his experience, he could definitely hang in like a captaincy um, role. But I think honestly, at this point, it might be worth it or might be like an option for him to move on to a coaching position within some sort of squad, uh, you know, and, and it's unfortunate because like, you know, I, I think that he deserves at least the second major, right? Like he is such a, a goat of an IGL, uh, um, you know, the one thing that he hasn't had has been those majors, right? And I, I think you are right in that they need to get a trophy at the very least, Um I'm very doubtful it's going to happen, though. Um, I, I am, I'll admit I'm more you know, optimistic on them being able to take do better in Blast than I am at Falcons. But, uh, you know, <laughs> um, this is definitely talking about... This yeah. is definitely the section we're talking about phase. So we'll get on to them in a little bit of a moment. We'll but, you know, to, like, yeah. you know I, 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 again, like, I, I have slowly but surely lost faith. And I don't want to lose faith because I'm such a Carrigan fan and I want to see him do well. But you have to face the truth sometimes. And right now, phase are not doing well. No, they're not. And it's interesting to, to speculate, I think, if it does end up being uh, also Carrigan leaving the roster, uh, if everything goes wrong for them. Mm. Yeah, how the hell does FaZe look going into next year? Like, who do they go scout? Who do they go poach? Do they still have the same, you know, behind-the-scenes mentality of being kind of a the OG super team, the team that should be on top of everything? Or have they kind of fallen down the tier, like, in their own minds? Like, will they just settle for someone like maybe take an upgrade maybe take a piece from a team who are falling apart they'll take a bit of a flyer on someone we'll find out i do you know yeah, what it'll be a he, shame he, if he, Carrigan doesn't he, end he, up he, yeah here's a spicy one what what if right ents ents project completely collapses and glaive oh, comes no. on the market <laughs> <laughs> how how fucking great would that be in the go igl development <laughs> <laughs> what would make it better is, as I was about to say, I really wish if Kerrigan does step back from my gelling, he becomes this team's coach. Imagine if he then goes, <laughs> you know who we need? Glaive. That would be fucking god tier. I want, mate, I want to see that. I want to see that. It probably will not happen, but mm. I want to fucking see it so fucking it, bad. Yeah. I'm so um, down for that. That that world, like I, I'm living in that world right now. <laughs> like that'd be phenomenal. Fully, I'd, fully. I'd be so down for it. But until then, we can only speculate. Yeah. I hope Faze give me a bit of a a last hurrah at this event because I have picked them. Hopefully they get through. But let's finish this off. Your final pick. I'm not going to ask you who it is. I know it's Falcons. We all know it's Falcons. How excited are you to have Falcons as your second pick? <laughs> Yeah, I realized at the start of the show, I, I gave you the first pick opportunity, and I feel like that might have come back to bite me in the ass. Um, no. uh, cause, uh, yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, f when comparing FaZe and Falcons, um, I, I had a lot of faith for FaZe at the start of, of, of their project. I didn't have a lot of faith in this Falcons project at the start of their project. Like, it's obvious they didn't get the pieces that they want when they made the super team upgrades, when they forewent the French roster of, 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 of years prior. Um, and... I, I, I thought it was going to shit the bed pretty quickly, and it did. Um, pretty much, almost from the word go. Katowice was a good run at the start of the year, you know, getting semi final. That's great and all. Yeah. Um, but what the fuck have they done since? <laughs> Nothing is the answer to that question. Like, it's just 
And and as well as that, you know, like they they know that they want to get better. They know that they want to be in a, in a far more superior position, and they want better pieces. And so they're going to work towards a world in which that happens. So, like any one of the players could get cut. And obviously, the roster rumors about Nico moving forward that that will obviously be a, a marginal improvement, uh, probably a major improvement actually towards Falcons. <laughs> um, but uh, like you know, like it's like in terms of the here and now, in terms of this blaster event, like I've I've just got no faith. I've got zero faith. I'm even to be honest, like there were some moments where I was wondering whether or not if the draw was going to be awful enough that they couldn't make it into the out of the showdown. Um, like that's how dire things have. I'm surprised they did make it out of the showdown. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. When I was watching the showdown, like when it first started happening, I was like, I saw the draw, I saw the bracket. I was like, it's weird to think this, but Falcons mm. are not really a favorite to make it through. Like, I mean, let's I saw, just see I who they're the to beat they VP, faced... they're to beat Cole, they're to beat mm. even M80. Like I'm, I'm not even sure they beat them at the start of it. So you yeah, know, that was well, a they big almost upset. did it. <laughs> they almost did it. Remember, map two was in overtime. So like mm. again, situation where 16, 14, one round could have gone differently. It could have been a very different result. And it's like at that point, they certainly wouldn't have made it out even the first round. And uh, I think VP underperformed in that tournament, but that's by the by. Um, you know, like it was, uh, uh, it was, yeah. Again, like I, I, it, the difference is, is the fact that I had no faith in Falcons from the word go. Um, I, I had faith in some of the players. You know, I had some of the faith in, in, you know, what Snappy was able to do in his previous career and the fact that they've got guys like Major Skin Dupree who have also got some experience. But I do think that at this point, those guys might be a little bit past it, if I'm being honest with you. Um, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, Martin and some Pius, those guys are great. But, you know, Martin hasn't really been at the highest ends of the tier one space before. You know, he's had some opportunities, but nothing that really breaks the ground of me of saying, right, he's, 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 a, he's a good, you know, he's a good guy. And, you know, similar story for Sam Pius, you know, he had a couple of good runs, but it wasn't anything that really, in experience terms, gives me the indication that this team was going to allow themselves all the progress that they would really hoped for. And again, that is the way things have worked out this year. So changes are on the horizon. We know that already. They are coming into this tournament and in any future tournaments that they'll have as clearly an obvious dead team because um, uh, they, they won't exist in the new year. And then that's the brutal reality of the situation. It might be an entirely different r roster at that point. Yeah. But no, I, uh, yeah, when I first see the project coming together, obviously we had the initial announcement when Falcons kind of brought in, uh, what's his name? Zonic, where yeah. he kind of says, like, everyone's going to get an opportunity. I remember that vividly because I thought, <laughs> fuck off. No, no, they're not. <laughs> you don't have all that money to play with, all those connections to major winning players and think, you know what, Launex, Body, and MBK. You yeah, guys are going to get a fair shot on... No, fuck off. That was not true. Ch championship winning squad. The NVK <laughs> is the captain. Yes, mate. That is exactly what the yeah. plan was from the start. Yeah, no. I mean, that... Uh, the what a failing from Zonic, by the way. Like, you know, I mean, we talk about how Glaive is the GOAT IGL. Zonic was the GOAT coach, right? He won all those majors with Glaive at the mm. helm, right? And it's like, you come into this Falcons project, as you say, they have more money than God. And here they are, like... Doing not doing doing nothing with it, you know. Like they haven't found again, partly because probably some of the players have turned them down. But at the same time, it's like you know, like you should be doing much more with these pieces. You even have some of the former pieces of that Astralis core, you know. Like you've got p players that you can very clearly work with, and you haven't done that. And so th that's a massive letdown on Zonic's part in my eyes as well. Yeah, and their biggest issue from the moment they dropped Boros, and even I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to say it was a terrible idea to have dropped him. Given I mean, what I understand of his nature beyond I mean, the server, Smoo can tell you that it was not a bad idea to drop Boris. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to pretend that stuff isn't true. I'm just talking just realities of who on this server can take a mouse, move a crosshair onto people's heads, and do it faster than the other people on the other team. They've struggled with that massively. Uh, Snappy's no frag in IGL. I, mate, love you, Snappy. I'm literally have been my favorite IGL since you were on Ents, right? And those Ents teams, execing A on Nuke, made me fall in love with the deep tapestry that is a Counter Strike exec. But you're not a good fragger. Mm. Magisk, he's always a good fragger for his roles. Who can have moments? He's not going to break the mold, do something outrageous, not with any consistency. And you can say, unfortunately, the same thing for every other rifler on the team, not name Boros, like Madden. Not really been that great a player since FPX in terms of uh, highlight real fragging. He's just more of a really solid piece who follows his IGL's instructions, executes them to a high level, um, but isn't outstanding 
Dupree, same story. And then some pies was supposed to be that other uh, piece that was supposed to bring the firepower. He had it on Entswood. Entswood, the number two team in the world. Sun mm. Pius was an outstanding Orpa, and that was a large part of the reason why they were able to succeed. It wasn't just the game plan was elite. It wasn't just that they had Nerts, and they had Madden, and they had Diha, but they had a star Orpa. In Falcons, he really hasn't been one. And so they've lacked the firepower. They've had to resort to recently just batshit in like strategies really to to cheese rounds it seems sometimes yeah. and i i just think the time for this roster to win was if you could have optimized that window if that window where you had boros and you were putting up with him and like i'm talking that katavitsa where boros puts yeah. up good numbers if some pious is a star in that moment and you're able to capitalize that have been a great time to do it then you could have kicked him and no one would care but the fact that you've kicked him not found a good replacement and just wallowed since has been a huge issue uh, this event, I expect them again to go straight home. Uh, maybe how generous do I want to be? Maybe they'll take a map in the the elimination game. Maybe that'll be how it goes. Um, <laughs> for now, I'm uh, not I mean, feeling I'm very not confident in that. that. <laughs> yeah, even, even if I'm it is phase, like to... yeah, <laughs> a bit ugly. They don't have a single player on the server who I really want to believe in to win a heads up fight. So it'll be all strategy, and even mm. there, Snappy Zonic. They haven't really been on the same page. It hasn't really worked. So disappointed, to say the least, by the project. But there's there's redemption coming. There's, uh, you know, on the morning of the fifth day, look to the east, and there's Nico on a white horse, <laughs> ready to come <laughs> wow, charging down that hill. what a fucking reference. I love that a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, like that, that that's all about the future, though, right? When we're talking about the here and now, Nico's here not playing fucked, in Falcons, yeah. you know? Like, so for Blast, like, there is no hope that, you know... You, I'm saying mm. that as my my pick in air quotes. Uh, you know, like I I just um, you know, I'm just thinking about all the different routes that Falcons could have taken now, and like just the, all the different things that could have happened with them. And yeah, I just I can't help but feel very underwhelmed. You know, like I I can't. I'm thinking back from memory, like I just can't remember a very good you know Falcons match for all intents and purposes. Mm. You know, like just because really aren't, yeah. there really haven't been any. Um, and I do feel like there's like a, maybe there maybe was a different world where Boris didn't torpedo his whole career basically, um, you know, and and maybe that he would have been able to do at least something with this team, you know, like because as you mentioned, right, in that kind of it's a win, he was the highest rated player for Falcons at that time. So like in that tournament, he showed that he had something about him in the tier one environment, but yeah. like you know the the fact that things went that way, I mean, maybe there was a, a lesson to be learned on his own part for how he maybe himself killed any potential in the team. Um, but, I mean, look, the reality is the Falcons are going to live with that, Falcons are going to deal with that, and Falcons are not going to deal with that a blast. Well, enough said. <laughs> yeah, by then it won't be sorted. They'll still be uh, wallowing in their misery and waiting for their saviour to come. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I'm kind of happy with how these picks have worked out. I'm, I'm glad. I think the, uh, the, yeah. the scoreboard is going to be interesting at the end of this one. Uh, but of course, as you see, for those of you who can count, there is a, a gap in the middle. There's only two of us. So that means the third set of picks will come from you, the viewers. Uh, look out for those polls. They are going to be going up way before the video, actually, because I realize it's not really much of a spoiler. You guys know I'm going to be making previews for big events. <laughs> I've been doing this for over two years now. <laughs> it's not a mystery. It's not a big reveal. So Watch out for those if you haven't seen them already. And hopefully I can continue to grow my advantage. But all right, Eternal J, thank you for coming on the show. Filling in for Yumi whilst he gallivants across Southeast Asia or whatever it is he told me he was doing. Um, hopefully he's having a good time and hopefully we'll see him again soon. But for now, you've been an excellent replacement who's made... Well, he may not be happy with your picks, but I certainly am. <laughs> Look, you know what? I'm here for the content. That's all I care about, bro. Like, I, I had a lot of fun. So thanks for having me on. You know, it was... a uh... A great pleasure. I don't think I could fill Yumi's shoes, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the credit where I can. Yeah, a valiant attempt. Very entertaining show, I'm sure, but all right. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, sub if you want to see more, and remember that members get more because they're better than you. Uh, they get access to behind-the-scenes content, uh, prospect demo reviews, interviews with coaches and other members of staff from teams when I can get them, uh, as well as anything else that takes my fancy. It's really a whole second channel, so go check it out. And all right, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.